So these are source components then. Just excuse me while I lift that up. You won't get so many reflections. This is a record player and this is a CD player here. Um, without any kind of amplification, so just play it on their own, you won't hear anything. Okay, this is the difference between a hi-fi setup, uh, a hi-fi separate setup, and a um, an all-in-one system thing that comes in one box, where you get the amplification and the speakers as part of the deal, as it were. Okay, so we have a record player here. This is the Riga P5 record player, which is quite a middle of the range of. Uh, Riga's um, uh, lineup. Their top model is the P9, and their lowest model is the P1. And it's P1, P3, P5, P7, P9. So slap bang in the middle of the range there. Um, it has a gold ring cartridge on it, which is the top gold ring moving magnet line, a uh, 1042GX. There. Okay. Um, Another source component that I have then is my Rega Apollo CD player. Uh, Rega, by the way, are um, a British uh, budget hi-fi make. Um, they're by no means the top um, brand in the entire world. Um, certainly, I, I've read about record players that cost many times as much as my P5 and CD players that also cost many times as much as my P5. Uh, the last uh, CD player that sticks in my mind that I've read about was the Wadi was a Wadia SACD stroke CD player that was £15,000 and this was nowhere near as much as that but it's still a very capable CD player. Okay, um, that's a mini disc uh, player there, Sony mini disc player, you could count that as a source but um, I suppose it was the mid-90s equivalent of the cassette deck uh, in terms of making recordings and things. I used it in my, um, my sort of home studio composing setup. And nowadays I use it just uh, to help me when I'm doing digital transfers to YouTube videos mainly. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on that for too much. So here then, my two main source components, a record player and a CD player. Okay. Um, Moving on to the amplification then, in order for um, you to be able to hear what these are doing, first of all, the tiny, tiny signal taken from a cartridge or from um, the transport of a CD player uh, has to be read and then it has to be sent to an amplifier to amplify the sound uh, by however much you've got the, um, the volume turned up on your amplifier down here um, and basically an amplifier consists of two sections to it a main what we call a preamp that's the bit where you choose um, which uh, setting you're going to have whether you're going to have a, a record player CD player a radio even um, and you've got two spare sockets there for other things such as a video player or DVD player or something um, and you've also got the, the power amplifier inside which actually does the, the magnification of the, of the, of the little signal in, into, you know, turning it into a volume that you're going to be able to hear when it comes out to the speakers. Okay, You can get preamp and power amps in separate boxes. Um, it's uh, basically you get what you pay for. If you pay £300 for an amplifier and then you pay £500 each for a power amp and a, and, and a preamp, um, you know, guess which is going to be the best quality. You know, that's, it's as simple as that, really. Um, when we talk about the law of diminishing returns, um, the law of diminishing returns in hi-fi kicks in at about 15 grand or something, where you think, uh, I, I, if I pay 15 grand for something, will it sound better than something that I've paid 25 grand for? That, I mean, that's, that's the, the level of it, really. I mean, hi-fi is pretty expensive. But all this stuff here is relatively in the hi-fi line relatively cheap and I would say that for my record player, for my CD player and for my, um, for my amplifier here I've probably paid as much as a decent Mac Pro or something like that uh, computer so you know you, you, you have got to be prepared to put money into it.
Sneaking under here is my Creek Phono stage. This is because record players can't be plugged into a normal line socket on an amplifier. Um, they need their own special um, socket. Now this amplifier here has one um, called Phono. I don't know if you can see it. Yes you can, just about see it. There, the Phono socket up there. Um, however, uh, you will get better results from a record player if you use a separate phono stage because this kind of integrated amplifier that's got the power amp and the preamp in one um, the, the cheaper ones tend to have a phono stage on but they're just meant to be get you started um, things okay so um, basically um, <coughs> If you've got a record player, I would suggest a separate phono stage. This one didn't break the bank. It was under £200. Um, so uh, I would suggest that, um, you know, if, if you're going to get a record player, get a phono stage. Now, moving over here, I'll just show you one of these. These are Riga R3 speakers. Um, I've chosen, by the way, to get all Riga stuff because I think the Riga stuff sounds absolutely lovely. But the idea behind getting Hi-Fi separates is that you choose, you mix and match brands and you listen before you buy the things and you try and listen with the components that you've got. Now, I've done that. Um, I have tried other brands of speakers, for example, uh, with uh, my uh, Riga setup. Um, but I, did, I just didn't think that anything sounded like these speakers. Now, when we talk about speakers, again, you know, the law of diminishing returns sets in, again, at about £20,000 or something like that. I've just read about a pair of speakers for £25,000. Um, the biggest uh, thing about speakers, there's a bewildering array of them, and they are the things that are going to make the most difference in your hi-fi setup. So I'm going to make another video about those and, and talk about them separately. All right, But just for now, let me just say that speakers generally fall into two categories. Floor standing speakers, such as these, because they're meant to stand on the floor. They're tall. Um, they, they usually have a platform at the bottom with spikes on um, to sit on the floor. Um, and bookshelf or, or um, stand mount speakers uh, is, is the second one. Although they're called bookshelf speakers, you are better off buying special dedicated hi-fi stands for them. Um, I don't actually have a bookshelf pair of speakers here to show you. Um, however, uh, I, may ha I may well have a photograph and I'll, I'll look and I'll see if I do have and then I'll put it on as part of this video. All right, but bookshelf speakers are smaller, I suppose, possibly tend to be about, if I can move out a little bit, about that big from there up to there um, and yes they, they are supposed to sit on the stands to get them up to ear level height okay but I will talk more about speakers in a separate video so there is basically um, the main ingredients that, that you're needed for a, a hi-fi separate setup okay to resource components something that's actually going to play the record or the CD, whatever, or even the radio. An amplifier, possibly a phono stage, and speakers. Okay? Um, and sadly, with Hi-Fi, um, these things actually cost real money. Um, however, you can also get some surprisingly good bargains. I've just been reading again about a pair of stand mount speakers made by the British manufacturer B&W. Uh, B&W's top speaker, Bower Bowers and Wilkins that is, their top speaker costs £35,000. Um, however, they do a, a really good budget um, uh, the bookshelf stand mount speaker for uh, £279, which is the uh, B&W 686. Um, and they're by all accounts lovely so um, <coughs> you can spend as much or as little as you like but how long is a piece of string basically um, once you start and you've got the basic setup you can start taking out components and upgrading them selling the old ones on eBay whatever as necessary um, and you don't have to start again with the whole thing alright okay so I will see you in my next uh, hi-fi video